بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Brothers and sisters, today we are in front of a monumental du'a A du'a that was so profound that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has recorded this in his book in Surah Al-Qasas verse number 24 This is a du'a that our, the great Prophet Musa Kalimullah, the one who spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made when he encountered a situation where when he was homeless, had no family, was a refugee was tired and exhausted that he made this dua and likewise we can use this dua whenever we are in dire need and we find ourselves in a sticky circumstance and we don't know the way out so let us explore the theme of this dua and the background of it and inshallah the plan is to try and memorize this dua and to use it in our own lives the starting point is that Musa alayhi salatu wasalam accidentally kills one of Pharaoh's men. And of course the situation ex escalated and people got to know about this killing, which was, of course, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was only trying to intervene and he was trying to break off the fight, but he ended up accidentally killing the man. Now, uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam is advised that he should leave the city immediately. Why? Because Pharaoh and his men are plotting to kill Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Inna al mala'a ya'tamiruna bika liyaqtuluk. So uh, an advisor, someone who liked Musa, someone who was a believer, according to some narrations, came to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam all the way from the end of the city. Ibn Ashur and many others mention the reason why he came all the way from the end of the city is because that's where typically um, Pharaoh would situate his palace at the end of the city for security reasons. So he's come all the way to tell Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, you need to leave right now or else you're going to be killed. And so Musa alayhi salatu wasalam leaves immediately. He's feeling a sense of trepidation. He feels a sense of insecurity. There's an immediate threat for his life. And so he just leaves. There's no preparation. There's no looking for passports. There's no looking for the right type of transportation and food to take, none of that. He leaves immediately. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam leaves without much preparation. Which way does he, is he gonna head? What does the compass say? Does he, have, does he have the modern amenities of a satellite navigation? And does he have the modern amenities of using GPS? No, he has none of that, but he's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his Iman is strong and so, he says, perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide me to the straight path. And uh, when, he's, when he turns towards the direction of Madian and his heart settles on this, he continues walking. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him all the way to the city of Madian, some 850 miles away from the city um, in which he was in when he left. So the scholars say it took him 45 days for him to travel, to escape this tyranny. And he finally arrives in Madian and he comes across the well of Madian where he notices that there were two women struggling with their flock, restraining them from going uh, to give them water. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, you can imagine he's tired, you can imagine he's exhausted, you can imagine that he's probably not slept properly. He sees two people struggling and he doesn't feel shy and neither is he reluctant to intervene. Although he's in foreign lands, he goes immediately to these vulnerable women and he says to them, Ma khatbukuma, what is your situation? They say that we can't feed our flock until the men disperse and our father is an old man. And so Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, in this situation where he's really tired, where he himself is in need of help, he goes out of his way to help others. And there's a profound lesson to be learned in that. When he goes and feeds the flock, he then takes shade under the tree and then he makes this monumental dua and he says, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer That my Lord, I'm in most need of whatever you have sent down upon me. Whatever you have endowed me with, I'm in need of it. Let's unpack this dua. But before we unpack this dua, let us consider Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, how he approached the dua. He didn't make the dua before he helped them. He helped them first. And then he took shade and then he made dua. Which suggests that if we want our duas to be effective, then we should try and alleviate the problem of another human being first. And perhaps that will open up the doors for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to alleviate 
our problems. And this is in line with the prophetic hadith of the Prophet in which وسلم, he says that Man kurba akhi, or kurbata akhi, he Allah kurbatahu fi dunya wal Whoever removes a calamity from his brother, Allah will remove, remove his calamity and his difficulty in this dunya and, and the akhirah. And so this dynamic is very important before we make a dua. Help someone and then make dua to Allah Taala, and Allah likewise will help you. And so this dua, he says, Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. My Lord, I'm in most need of whatever you have sent down upon me. Notice that Musa والسلام, has a good regard of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he already thinks that something is on his way because he said Lima and Zelta, whatever you have sent down upon me I know it's not reached me yet but I'm in need of it that's number one number two is that he considered whatever Allah's decree was as khayr that whatever good you have sent down upon me I'm in need of it right now to have a good regard and assumption of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Prophet وسلم, says that Allah is to you the way you think of him and I'm in the thought and mind of my servant. And so Musa والسلام, has this optimistic, this hopeful, this very promising regard of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And last uh, is that Musa والسلام, is not prescriptive in his dua. He's not prescriptive. He doesn't say, oh Allah, give me shelter. Oh Allah, I, I need to get married. Oh Allah, I, I need to have a bath. No, none of that. He keeps it open and that's it. Because he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he responds and he knows the condition of his servants. When sisters, quite often in life, when things are broken, when we're feeling down, something that we least uh, expected comes and lifts us back up. And this is the case of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. For the women who helped out, the two women, one of them comes back and invites Musa alayhi salatu wasalam on behalf of her father, which according to some narrations was Shu'ib alayhi salatu wasalam. He then goes back to their home and we know that there's a marriage proposal given to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and he gets married and then he gets a job and then he then establishes his family all through this dua and the help which he gave to this woman. This is a profound dua that took Musa alayhi salatu wasalam from being in a state of misery to fortune from being single to being married, from being unemployed to becoming employed, from being a refugee to having citizenship. And in similar vein, whenever we struggle, whenever we come across a situation and we read this dua, inshallah, Allah will also open up doors your way. So remember, rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask him for all goodness. Help someone before making a dua and have a good assumption of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the dua that you make. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. Our Lord, indeed, we are in most need of that which you have sent down upon us. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa